scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. There is a spiritual pattern that leads to definite outcomes that we call glory. Are we together now? Every possibility in the kingdom, listen carefully, every possibility in the kingdom is a product of understanding and working in keeping with certain spiritual patterns god does not leave the manifestation of the glory of god to guessing there are exact spiritual patterns that produce exact outcomes now when the believer is laced with all kinds and all levels of ignorance you will find out that number one your life will be bankrupt of glory or number two your life will produce dimensions of glory that are not predictable so you may stumble across certain results perhaps results that come from prophetic decrees so a decree is made over your life and that week becomes a week of favor and then it ceases because the real pattern that controls that outcome has not been grasped this is the product of this is the the the, the call for mastery mastery brings you in a position where you no longer fear your results because you have studied the pattern that leads to that outcome are we together now god is a god of pattern when you go to meet a tailor look up please you meet a tailor one who perhaps is responsible for your your clothes you show that tailor something that you want no matter how complicated the design is sometimes you are even afraid whether the man can do it and he laughs he says i understand he knows how to produce that result why because as complicated as that outcome is there is a pattern if you are not a tailor it will remain a mystery the assignment of the training school is to demystify that mystery are we together now when you go and meet a medical doctor especially a consultant while you are describing your cases using all kinds of uh, you know limited expressions all he's looking for are patterns because there are patterns that can reveal to him that this is this sometimes the patterns may require to take specimens and then to test further but the whole idea is that through the power of patterns many lives have been preserved medically speaking there is a pattern that leads to influence there is a pattern that leads to walking in the supernatural there is a pattern listen carefully that makes you an exceptional leader there is a pattern that leads to wealth and abundance a pattern for speed a pattern for deliverance your assignment as a believer is to remain ever open to bring together by the the ministry of a teaching priest and in partnership with the spirit Every service is supposed to be an exposition of spiritual patterns. So that if and when you have been around a house of God for a while, where the word of God is taught with, accurate, with accuracy, there you may not know everything, but at least we should see commendable results in your life by engaging patterns. Are we together? Now watch this. I'm holding a mic here and there is a system to put this mic on when I push this down then it comes back 
I switched it off. Now, the, the mic does not care who manipulates it. The moment you engage the pattern that offs the power, it offs. Am I right on that? It does not ask you whether you are an American. It does not ask you whether you are Russian, whether you are European, whether you are Nigerian. If the mic is off, it is not because of any tribal sentiment. So you can hold this mic with such profound potential to amplify your voice and yet you may not be heard. And you see, it is dangerous to not produce results for a long time, I have taught you, because your, the absence of your result produces another kind of theology. When, you, when someone has to learn God through the lens of your life, what part of God will be misrepresented? If someone has to use your life as the only template to learn God, if your life were the only Bible to be read, are we going to read John in your life? Are we going to read Proverbs in your life? For some of you, the only part in your life may be Ecclesiastes. You will rob us of knowing that there are other chapters. My assignment is to stretch you and to show you, listen, that you do not have to be afraid of results. Results are exact products of patterns. Are we together? Yes. Moses in Exodus chapter 33, Exodus chapter 33, we'll read verse 13, then we'll go to verse 18. Moses was crying unto God. Verse 18 was a cry to experience the glory of God. But most people do not know that the request started from verse 13. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, it says, show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. Do you know what he was saying? In other words, I, I need to lead these people properly, but the problem is my convictions and my personal results. And I know that the glory of God upon me would affect their loyalty. So show me your way. Now verse 18, 33 and verse 18. And he said, I beseech thee, show me your glory. You will never experience the glory of God in any aspect of your life until you study carefully the spiritual pattern connected to that. Please, I want you to follow carefully and believe what I'm telling you. Your life will remain an unending wonder once you master the patterns of the spirit. So when the devil wants to rob you of the glory of God, he does not fight the glory. He fights your access to the patterns of the spirit. Are we together? In John chapter 8 and verse 32, Jesus now comes in the New Testament and he's teaching us. And he said, ye shall know the truth. He calls it the truth. He says, and the truth that you know shall make you free. That the truth has liberating power. In other words, if you are bankrupt of the truth, you can remain in bondage. Amplified says that, that you shall be unquestionably free in certain renditions. In John 17, 17, John 17, 17, it says, sanctify them by your truth. Thy word is truth. Go back to KJV. Sanctify them through your truth. He says, thy word is truth. So when the Bible talks of truth, he means access to the word of God. Ignorance is a very dangerous cancer. Worse than the medical diseases that plague people. Ignorance. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. The prophet was speaking by the spirit and lamenting said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge he says because thou hast rejected knowledge i will also reject thee that thou be no priest to me seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy god i will also forget thy children in psalm 82 from verse 5 to 7 very popular scripture here they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you, not some of you, not the prophets among you, not the apostles among you. 
all of you are children of the most high verse 7 says but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes ignorance is a dangerous cancer in this kingdom hallelujah in fact in Luke chapter 11 I believe um, verse 35 it should be Luke 11 give us 35 Jesus said take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not darkness do you know what he's saying that means you can carry a body of information it may even be spiritual truth and you hope that you are carrying the truth if it is the truth it has liberating power isn't it interesting that there are many believers who carry a backlog of all kinds of knowledge using all sorts of references but in the face of real life situation they are not able to produce victory if it does not produce victory it is not the truth the truth sustains the power to bring victory to the believer and let God be true and every man a liar are we still together it says take heed that what you call light that means I can carry a revelation and be shouting Rema for years and yet your life does not capture the corresponding glory did you know I wish I had something a biro or a stick or something give me your drumstick my watch this ladies and gentlemen this is a drumstick Someone can deceive me into believing that this is a mic and I can sincerely believe that this is a mic. Am I right on that? Now, the problem is not my believing. The problem is that I believe a lie. So I can hold that mic confidently in front of you coming from many years of indoctrination. I have been taught that this is a mic. It's just that it was designed in a way that looks like a drumstick. So I can call the whole world and say, come and see how loud this mic can be. The only thing or the only issue here is that my believing was unto a lie. So he's saying, take heed so that what you have been calling Rema, take heed so that what you have been saying, this is revelation. Does it stand the test of time and does it produce the character of glory? Many of us have been holding things that look like what we think they are, but they really are not. You've been holding a revelation that you believe this is the secret of prosperity, but it's not showing in your life. You have been holding a revelation that you believe this is the secret of longevity. This is the secret of excellence. Listen, if it does not produce the glory connected to it, it is not that light. It is not the truth. Are we together now? So back to this example, I'm holding a drumstick and now you imagine that I now add pride to this ignorance. So that when you are lovingly coming to call me to say, listen, you've been holding this for five years, but I want to, with every sense of love, let you know that this is not a mic. This is a drumstick. And I say, no, my mentor told me or a spirit told me that anything that looks like this with a pointed end is a mic. What if he was wrong? Listen, we're not discussing the subject of transformation, but I was teaching our school of ministry students. I think someone asked a question and I was teaching them that when you come to the school of transformation, there are two dimensions to followership that leads to transformation. Just for your knowledge, the first level is called follow them. So, God mandates that you follow human models. Are we together? Models whose lives have captured results enough to inspire you. But the greater dimension is looking unto Jesus. That means you now come to the awareness that even the models as best as they are can be limited. That they are also students in the school of the spirit. They are just students that have had the privilege to go ahead of you. So a time will come where both the lecturer and the student stand at a loss. It is only the God of heaven that can show mercy at that point. Are we together now? So that your followership may look like you are following a man, but that beyond that man, you are always verifying that that man is following the Christ. So in, in experience, you are not just looking on to men, you are looking on to Jesus. That's how you get holistically transformed. I can love you with all my heart and not mean to deceive you but i may have an accumulation of inaccurate or 
blatantly wrong knowledge and I may communicate that error to you with such passion and I hope not with pride and you receive it in honor to Jesus and in honor to me as his servant except that when you act out that wrong information the corresponding glory that should follow does not follow are we together thank you now your rod is anointed <laughs> no 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 don't don't worship it hallelujah you know believers this is still part of the things i'm saying now somebody can go and hang put a rope on that thing now no it was just an example if we're together say amen, amen. so the bible gives us a word of caution and this is a message really to us all but it extends to the body of christ it's important that in this season we are careful and unashamed about examining that which we call light is it true light i love the way the bible puts it it says that was the true light that lighted every man meaning there are false lights you don't have to be a wicked person to bring deception you can be sincere but the lights that you carry the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that some in the latter time shall depart from the faith is that in your bible it says they shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons the person does not have to be demonized the person does not have to be bad but you can teach something that is inconsistent with the character of god it will still bring destruction to God's people are we together my greatest if I have any fear at all in my life it is this that I do not examine my life at a point and find out that what I have been calling truth especially that which I've been proposing to God's people is now discovered that is a lie so I continue to examine myself even whilst I teach are we together now yes but I can tell you by the authority and integrity of scripture, forget about the manifestation of the glory of God in your life if you do not study the patterns of the kingdom. Let's go to the kitchen now. Many of you do well in the kitchen. You know how to cook all kinds of things, continental dishes, local dishes, some of you. Are we together? Am I right on that? And then some of you are so good that, you know, we call you chefs and all of that. And like I've always told you, when you meet somebody who is professional, all you need to do is describe your end product. Tell them this is the picture of what I, I saw this. Can you produce this? And they smile with the confidence of a good student and say, get out of my kitchen. Give me time. And sometimes what will tempt you back to the kitchen is the aroma that is a testament of mastery. Are we together now? And now you are tempted to come back and say, what in the world is going here? And they tell you your meal is ready. But imagine a very sincere relative, a sincere brother, maybe your husband, who has, who has not got the knowledge of these mysteries and these patterns in the kitchen. Even if he's an anointed person, a, a, a preacher. Now, you lock the person there. Are we together? For instance, me. You know what I'm going to do? I will do what I know to do. Pray. I will pray first. Because the Bible says, any man afflicted, that thing there is not... That is not a test. That's a trial for me. Are we together? But the point is that there is no glory until there is an understanding of patterns. If you understand this, half of your issues are solved. Because all you need to do is write the various areas in your life where the glory of God has not yet been revealed. And then you will take responsibility like a mature believer that you are or becoming. Are we together? You now get back and say there has to be an explanation as to why in spite of the prayers and the prophetic decrees, it looks like the curse is still at work in this family. Is it that God is powerless? There has to be an answer. Do you know? There is nothing I know that pleases God like brokenness mixed with a sense of responsibility.
Hallelujah. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 15. Here's what the Bible says. The labor of the foolish. The foolish here not being an insult is a description. Bankruptcy of knowledge. The labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them. That means there is no sparing. Provided you are not interested in going for revelation to understand the patterns, the ways of God. It says it will weary every one of them because he knoweth not how to go into the city. Not because there is no city. Because he knoweth not how to go into the city. Now, there are sincere men and women of God who love Jesus with all their hearts, but they have not learned the ancient patterns and the mysteries that make ministry work to command results with the dignity of kingdom integrity. There are many people whose assignments are influence dependent, and yet they do not know the patterns that can make a generation loyal to you. It is dangerous to understand your assignment, but not know and or have the tools that will help you to be effective. Are we together? Yes. In this kingdom, please write, in this kingdom, authentic results are built on the revelation of the ways of God. In this kingdom, authentic results are built on the revelation of the ways of God. When you know the ways of God, or you may call it the patterns, the spiritual patterns that are allocated for the outcome you desire, then you are ready to command authentic results. That in this kingdom, authentic results are built upon the revelation of the ways of God. I wrote something down here that I want you to please listen to very carefully. Action in ignorance is not faith. Action in ignorance is not faith. Respectfully speaking, there are many teachings on faith that just emphasize action. Action is the later part of faith. The foundation of Bible faith is revelation. Knowledge. If you act in ignorance, for instance, back to my mic example. Let's assume that I'm now given the mandate to switch this mic on. I can play with it around. Sincerely so. I can knock the mic, I can jump around it. I'm taking action, but it's in ignorance. None of those actions will bring it, will switch it on. So if I, before you take action, you must verify that you are acting with sufficient knowledge. Let me give you an example of what many people do in the body of Christ. Please look up. You can choose any issue of concern whatsoever and you can literally act out a variety of action steps that the average believer would take. For instance, let's use a general example. A person or a family that is going through very tough financial seasons. You can honestly ask them, not for mockery, but just to help. So what have you done about this situation? The first thing they will tell you is, I've done everything I know how to do. And that's the truth. But what did you do? They will say, I prayed. They will say, I fasted. Not wrong. But the patterns that produce lasting wealth in the economy of the kingdom is not just dependent on these two. Are we together now? And you tell them, what else? They say, I begged an uncle, a wicked man who has all the money to solve this my problem he did not give me. What else did you do? I said I would try one business or the other and it still did not work. Now, mark this student in light of the knowledge you know now. This student will barely pass that exam. Because although there is a lot of dissipation of physical and emotional energy, the truth is that he's acting in defiance with the authentic patterns that make the blessing manifest even financially. So if you want to help this man, the key is not just to give him capital to go and start business. You've only recycled another pain. Are we together now? If you really want to help this man, you have to go back to Isaiah 61 to preach the gospel to the poor. It will look like an insult. Does the poor need help or need preaching? So you now begin to give this person a new orientation. 
Hallelujah. A family that has been bankrupt of victory in terms of, you know, their spiritual liberty. Everyone in that family tied down by curses and yokes. You ask them, what have you done about it? Sincerely, they will most likely answer this way. I've gone to every prayer house. They will even list it. I've met this man of God. In fact, here is the photo. He snapped with me to tell you that I, I, I really met him. So why has the situation not changed? Do I know? How do you help this man now? Every time he or she is studying their Bible, they will find it written here that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And their experience cannot change this reality. No. Let God be true and every man a liar. So for that person, the moment you find out you've done all you know to do and your situation does not change, it's time to start re-examining the patterns upon which your actions are based. Are we together? I hear that there's a, there's a popular saying that doing the exact same thing and, ex, ex, and expecting another kind of result is one definition of insanity. I think I agree. When your actions do not lead to the results, it is not just a faith problem. It is a knowledge problem. You are acting on wrong or inaccurate information. Faith in ignorance is not faith and will not produce results. Please write it down. Faith in ignorance, underline the word ignorance. Faith in ignorance is not faith and will, I mean action, my apologies. Action in ignorance, action in ignorance is not faith and will not produce results. Action in ignorance is not faith and will not produce results. That means the first assignment of any believer seeking to produce results is knowledge, revelation, not action. The first assignment of any believer seeking to produce results is knowledge, revelation knowledge. What kind of knowledge? A thorough understanding, I wrote here, of the patterns allocated for the specific spiritual outcomes. A thorough understanding of the patterns. A thorough understanding of the patterns allocated for specific spiritual outcomes. Once upon a time in my life, I didn't walk in this level of spiritual power. Why? Because the level of spiritual understanding that sponsors this power. I have taught you here. Please look up. When you read the book of Revelations, the Bible says, Worthy is the lamb that was slain and all of that. Uh, or he said, Weep not, for the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed. He's worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. And then he said, I looked at the throne and I saw a lamb as though had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes notice seven horns and seven eyes the eyes there talks of revelation the horns there talk of authority so for every horn there is an eye connected to it seven horns seven eyes if you have only two eyes two dimensions of revelation you will only have the corresponding authority that matches your level of revelation seven horns seven eyes seven horns seven eyes hallelujah leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 the lord was speaking to moses commanding him now he says, this is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do. He says, and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. In genuine pursuit for spiritual power, I began to explore the materials of people that I thought I saw the workings of the spirit in their lives to a very commendable degree. And I started searching. 
reading through their books and reading through their stories all that i was looking for were patterns listen every time you study the lives or the works of great people don't just be carried away by the parables and the stories and the similitudes make sure you are sensitive enough to deduce patterns the power is not in the story the power is not in the parable that's why jesus would give parables but hidden within those parables were patterns those who heard it just went back nodding their heads they had been enlightened in terms of you know from a, a, a literary standpoint but the disciples will come and say what is the hidden meaning of this and jesus will begin to explain the sower is this the seed is the word of god and so on and so forth you have not really benefited from any material until you deduce from that material the pattern connected to the glory let me repeat myself again that you have not been blessed by any material until you can deduce from that life or that material the pattern that reveals that glory i remember years ago watching benny Hinn minister and such display of the glory of god upon his life miracles signs and wonders i would watch reinhard bonke of blessed memory i would watch um Billy Graham minister in his crusades and he would just come up the stage just casually and for the next one hour you were spellbound by the level of intellectual acumen the intelligence the his presentation of the gospel was so compelling you would watch the people and, and those days at, at, at least as far as I watched you didn't have instruments playing like you know the Pentecostal charismatic circles would do there would be pin drop silence and while he's talking you would almost think the people were ignoring him until he made the altar call you would see people get up just walk like something was pushing them i said what kind of grace is this he did not seem to perform many miracles as i know and as i saw but my goodness the compelling power of the gospel and i said i desire this grace show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient path? Lead us along eternal highway. We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. I saw great fathers like Kenneth Copeland or our Roberts. They spoke about the healing power of God and they spoke about his ability to prosper a man, to match the wealth of nations. It looked like they were joking except that their lives proved it. You study the story of Aura Roberts, now the university stands as a monument, an eternal signature that a man of faith walked upon the earth. You would watch his crusades where he would lay hands upon thousands of people and you would record miracles as though they were stage managing it. I said, no, this glory must have a pattern behind it. Don't just admire the possibilities that come from the life of a believer. You must reach back and find out what spiritual pattern has been found. I watch men like R.W. Shambach these were men who walked mysteriously in dimensions of power. You study their videos and their materials, you would see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. In his popular words, he would shout and say, don't touch that dial. And the miracles, the manifestations, you would hear of fingers that were amputated, growing back. Do I talk of Charles and Francis Hunter? men who trivialized the healing they they brought mastery to the healing ministry they brought they brought a scientific component to healing they would teach a particular dimension of healing and line up the people who had that case literally pulling people out of wheelchairs like child's play the things that are written are for time the bible says they are written for our learning I watched Benny Hinn pile up stadiums, pile up auditoriums in the name of the Lord. If you heard that Benny Hinn was coming to your area or Reinhard Bonke, I had the privilege to be in at least one or two of his meetings. And his last and final and arguably about his largest meeting that happened in Lagos. 
I mean, you. I watched Benny Hinn. My dad those days used to get, you know, the 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 the, the, the cassettes of his crusades. It was from him that I saw that evangelism by fire. That fire would come upon something and consume it physically without you setting it up. Ah. These were not things I was told. I had the privilege to be in at least one of his major crusades. I saw a display of the power of God from that man almost like he was doing nothing. And yet I watched, respectfully speaking, other people and you would see the energy being dissipated, begging God to move. The moment the axe head is blunt, be ready to dissipate energy without results. Hallelujah. And then do I talk of our own patriarchs in this nation? Men like Apostle Babalola. You read about these people, you will think they were exaggerations. These were careers of potent glory and power. Did not have the best of secular enlightenment and education, but my goodness, these men in their, in their wild quest for God, they stumbled not everything, but what they caught, they really caught. Hallelujah. I study a lot on the history of the church of, of God in Nigeria, you know, generally. And I mean, some of these men, some of the prophets past that have joined the cloud of witnesses, you step within their vicinity and they x-ray you. Men who laid hold on eternal life, dimensions of the spirit. Hallelujah. You would go to their crusade grounds and you would marvel at the manifestation of the hand of God. That if they told you that these men were once alive, you would think they were parables. Can I tell you, every dimension of glory that seems missing in the body of Christ is not missing. Because the glory is a reaction. It is that we need to trust God for grace to find the patterns. There are patterns. Can a man prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity? Yes. But have we not tried and tried and tried and it did not work? And you know, we have, respectfully speaking, anybody who catches whatever small, at least they share the little that they know. But let me tell you, there has to be a higher dimension of revelation, a body of truth that is now organized. Are we together? Many people have done it in the personal development industry. Many have done it in the secular. We have books. They have been able to use statistics to study success, different dimensions of success. In fact, just to talk a bit on that, when you, when you study the story, many of you would know him now in, um, as we know in the business world or in the world of leadership generally. You hear about a mysterious name called Napoleon Hill. That man was a prodigy of Andrew Carnegie and Andrew Carnegie together with some of the world's successful people at that time Andrew Carnegie called him history would tell us and told him that there are many people dying the wealthy people were dying with fire in their bones and not sharing their secrets and nobody has been able to compress the things that they knew that brought their results and he mandated Napoleon Hill what the book that you know you know some of his books and materials where they were the end product of his personal research he was given letters of introduction to go to everybody in the then world who had attained a commendable level of success and to interview them then to piece together the principles that produce an excelling life that's what brought books like think and grow rich and a number of his other books that today have built many conglomerates across the globe there is no respectable leadership institute, financial institution that does not pay honor and respect to these materials. 
And a few people like Robert Slerden now alive and other great people, they, they, they were able to piece together a number of their materials. But I submit to you, the body of Christ needs to come to a higher level. We need to be able to distill these factors with precision and add intelligence to it. If we intend for these dimensions of possibilities to be widespread across the body, it does not have to be shielded like a cult. What does it take to live a long life? What does it take to be prosperous? What does it take to dislodge the entities of darkness that, try the, that tie the destinies of men down? What does it take to rise to a position of influence? This is why the Lord gave us teaching priests according to Jeremiah 3 and verse 15 that I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart, that they will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Are we together? Yes. So taking actions in ignorance will not produce the outcomes that we desire. I've had the honor of meeting a few great people, extremely great people, especially in ministry and in the supernatural. And where I have the opportunity to probe into their results, I just ask them politely, could you share with me? What did God show you? Others just say generally, they may just say the grace of God or the mercy of God. But sometimes you need to respectfully probe into the dynamics. What is it that you always do that makes God show up when you call him? What is it that makes that help is always at the corridors of your life that you never seem to lack help, both material and human? Did you not know, ladies and gentlemen, that there are patterns connected to this thing? What pattern was Noah given that made the animals to leave the bush and with orderliness, they started walking their way to the ark? If you know that pattern, it will draw customers to your shop. If you know that pattern, it will draw members to your church. Noah did not imagine Noah going through the burden of shouting around. No. Every manifestation of the glory, let me repeat, has a spiritual pattern connected to it. You can jump, you can shout, but if it's not the pattern, you will not see the glory. Hallelujah. I remember when I began to see the healing anointing working in my life. It was almost like magic. In fact, quite frankly, I thought the people who were testifying were just doing it because they didn't want me to feel bad. Maybe they were tired and they appreciated my labor and wanted to console me by saying they were fine. And even as it is now, we are still toddlers relative to the dimension that God intends we step into. Who is like him, lion and the lamb, seated on the throne. Mountains bow down, every ocean roar, to the king of kings. We will praise Adonai, from the rising of the sun, Till the end of every day, praise Adonai. All the nations of the earth, all the elders and the saints, sing praise. Men will sing that song because of your life. That you, you will be a man, the walking glory of God. That when people want to learn God, they say, look what God has done with a life such a manifestation not not onto competition listen look god can walk through a man that that man becomes a salmon that as a man of god if you are looking for a salmon god brings the image of that man and a topic comes out from any aspect of his life i and the children that the lord has given me he says we are for signs 
it didn't say we will produce signs that we become men to be wondered at like the bible says that people will say how what did god do with a man to produce these kinds of results let your light so shine it says before men this is one of the things that we hope that god will do through our lives this week in uk my goodness it will be it will be a dramatic manifestation of the grace and the power of god we say it because our confidence our sufficiency is not in ourselves but i've told you if you found a pattern it will work anywhere hmm. listen a chef will do well in abuja he will do well in a kitchen in florida he will do well somewhere in the caribbean it does not matter the location regardless once there is an opportunity to live out the pattern the healing anointing will work in nigeria it will work in us it will work in uk it will work in the middle east the name of the lord that you know and know how to use it will work in nigeria it will work everywhere elijah could stand upon the confidence of these patterns and he said send a man to me and let him know there is a prophet in israel how could a man speak like that it was the same elijah who said cry unto baal have you forgotten the pattern to call down fire listen the men in the bible that you call supernatural were simply custodians of patterns it looked like they were custodians of power but I am telling you the power resides in the patterns it is more sustainable to be a custodian of patterns than a custodian of power you can get power through impartation you don't get patterns through impartation patterns come as a product of revelation but when you find it listen the men that we think in the body of Christ are arrogant. They are not arrogant. It is the intoxicating power when you find patterns. So fathers like Bishop Oyedeko would tell you that they rolled and say, yeah, I can never be poor again. And you see, people can misunderstand them, but it is the truth. Our father in the Lord, Baba Deboy, will say, God told me there is someone here that in two weeks your life will change and you hear people shouting amen he is not just speaking english he is speaking on the strength of patterns elisha said by this time tomorrow when your life becomes a sign and a wonder it becomes an epistle this is the point the results that emanate from your life should not create competition or to look down on people demean and downplay people no you would have lost the purpose it's supposed to compel people that someone who is lazy with his prayer life by the time he sees certain dimensions of possibilities through your life it will activate that fire again hallelujah every time i watch this man this is what happened to me i said there has to be something ben Hinn would sing songs like for you are glorious and worthy to be praised you're the lamb upon the throne and on to you we lift our voice in praise you're the lamb upon the throne And then you will see manifestations of the spirit amazing things I watched the videos of this man and and in my spirit my cry was oh God revive us again when the devil wants a generation to lose the glory of God all he needs to do is to look for the few people who have the patterns left and kill them or make the territory persecute them and through that act of dishonor they close the door for continuity hallelujah thine the glory 
Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us You've heard my story. I told you that one time I was listening to Pat Robinson, the founder of CBN 700 Club, and very gentle but powerful man of God. I mean, they had a widespread grace for the word of knowledge in that ministry. Almost every one of the staff that I know, you know, operates in that grace. And one day I heard the man speaking and he said, as a young minister, when he was about to start ministry, that he prayed and he cried that God will give him three things. Number one, if I recall, he prayed that God would give him wisdom. Number two, he prayed that God will grant him favor. Number three, he prayed that God will grant him the anointing of the spirit. I said, this is it. I can see the glory in your life that reflects that those patterns have been kept. I went back in the place of prayer. And many other instances happened. I prayed for favor for one month. It was a February of that year. From start to finish. I said, Lord, this is not something that came by default. But I have studied from the end of my destiny. You have shown me. And as far as I saw at the time, I said, if I did not have the favor of God working in my life, I may not be able to do my assignment effectively. And I went to study the patterns that command favor. When I found it, I said, this is it. Nothing showed at that time that it was found. But hallelujah to Jesus, when you find it, it speaks. Man of God, listen to me. Probably your prayer group or your ministry somewhere right now is struggling in a particular area. This message is an assignment, it's a call to go back. Listen, do you know, believers study, but we don't study patterns. We don't even know what we are looking for. So we don't even know when we found it. We just study and say, wow, anything that excites us. No, you don't do that. You isolate an area where you need to see the glory of God manifest. Then for starters, you pray for guidance in the, in the spirit. And then you search for men and women who exemplify that dimension. And now, don't just get excited by the results. Here is what most people do. They hang around people with results and think hanging around is what produces the results. You see that now? Just because you snap with an anointed man does not make you anointed. You only implicate yourself for your destruction because you will now be elevated to platforms you don't have the grace to defend and with shame you will be reduced back to where you rightfully belong. Whenever you have access to men who have this result, your proximity should be an opportunity to do whatever it is scripturally within your means to get them to open you up to the patterns. Listen. When God gives you unusual access to great people, you would be unwise if all you do is celebrate the leverage. It is no leverage until the patterns are revealed to you. Learn this. Many of you have served great men of God. Many of you have served billionaires. Many of you served senators. And all you have are their photos. All you have are physical gifts they gave you. You didn't do well. Sir, what took you from a local government chairman to a senator that regardless the antagonisms and without bribing you still remain show me a pattern and the man will tell you it started from my grandmother one day i took a cup of water to mama and she said kneel down she said i did not do well but i lay my hands upon you and i elevate you to be higher than me oh that is it see let me repeat it one more time please listen to me results do not happen by luck results are exact engagings or engagements of patterns the purpose of scripture is that you have access to these patterns scattered through scripture are patterns that correspond to various dimensions of the glory of god if you have found some Others have found quite some. 
but God is still counting on many who will find all for instance raising the dead is still a mystery across the body of Christ do you know that I believe that there are times we will find these patterns and it will become as frequent as healing headaches is that true now you see sicknesses and diseases as much as we desire with all our hearts to see people healed it grieves my heart when I see people who were prayed for and did not get the kind of healing they desired but th there were times in the Bible when the Bible would say Jesus healed them all the disciples thought it was just by laying on of hands they went to drag that epileptic patient you remember and they embarrassed themselves there nothing happened and they came to Jesus they said listen we're frustrated why couldn't this happen and Jesus told them, because of your unbelief, this kind goeth not but by this and that and that. And Peter kept following. A time came when the shadow of Peter. You can see growth, measurable growth. The Bible says God wrought special miracles, Act 19, Acts chapter 19, by the hands of Paul, so that handkerchiefs and aprons that were taken from him were put upon the sick. Come on now. The ways of God is the secret that this generation needs. Listen, we have had sermons, wonderful sermons, commendably so. We have heard songs. We have heard recitations. But it's time for a, a, a manifestation, an accurate communication of provable patterns. Patterns whose glory you can relate with so that we don't build on rubbles and shadows celebrating supposed remas that don't seem to have corresponding levels of glory because hear me the world that is coming in the next 10 years is not this world that you know it will be a world of precision and proofs let me repeat to you prophetically that the world that is that our civilization is evolving into are you seeing the level of accuracy that science is attaining onto with the manifestation of AI right now and all of these things, there is exactitude and precision. Even in medicine, except the church. Listen, revival is threefold. Number one, the individual. Number two, the body of Christ. Then number three, territories. We are still in phase one, where God is bringing an awakening to individuals. Because that's the pattern we see in the life of Gideon. The first thing that happened was a personal revival for Gideon. The Gideon pattern now. Then after Gideon was walked upon, he said, now go in this demise. Gideon blew a trumpet and 33,000 of his men now came. And even among them, there was a pruning until they were left 300. And it was with those they went and defeated the Midianites. So the first thing God is doing is personal awakenings and revivals planting a hunger in people young and old from every nation and every territory and what a joy God has mandated Africa and even Nigeria every continent has sounded their shofar we're about to hear the shofar that comes from Nigeria and my goodness and Africa it will be loud and clear we may not export oil we may not export other technological products but we are exporting the spirit with power with proof we are exporting superior dimensions of the spirit we look to Yahweh Yahweh our hope is Yahweh Yahweh we look to Yahweh Hear me, 
it is only a revived man that can cause revival it is only a transformed man that can bring transformation it says such as i have give i so when we talk about awakenings and revivals many of us are just thinking going to the nations no you go to the nations without miracle working power you go to the nations broke and hungry and tired no allow that which you want to import to work in your life first then you will come with confidence 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 the things we have seen the things we have heard it says that which our hands have handled even of the word of life that is what we preach now you can stand and tell a generation we have not brought you cunningly devised fables listen we're about to pray I want to ask you a few questions question one is it true that God walks through men don't just answer think about it can the God of the universe actually hold the hands of a mortal man and walk with that man I was speaking some time ago with a consultant who was telling me please sit down the consultant was telling me some of the advancements that have happened in medicine and based on what he told me here's what he said that right now using the power of the internet a doctor from somewhere can actually be performing surgical procedures without being there physically using the power of robotics and all of that you know I said wow that just reminded me that the God of heaven can find expression through the hands of mortal men so you see possibilities that are beyond the man and you know that there must be a mighty God producing this I ask you again is it true that the God of the heavens whom the heavens cannot even contain that he can literally live speak and walk through men do you believe it is possible question two do you believe it can happen with you that these hands can literally the hand of Jehovah can rest upon an ordinary man's hand and you will command possibilities that these lips of clay as frail as they are his majesty can echo his voice and everyone in Zion can hear and know that he's the one speaking I'm asking you a question do you believe he said great is the mystery of godliness that God can become a man ladies and gentlemen this was a revelation that the fathers caught today it is a theological debate in the church was never meant to be so is it true that God can live through men and manifest provable possibilities in their lives how do you keep speaking and people are shouting up and down are you a herbalist by what mechanism My strings man is not here. and wonders God living through men 
God speaking through man. God manifesting infinite possibilities through man. Listen to me. Hear me. My call tonight is that you leave the realm of shadow boxing. There is a higher dimension in the spirit. A dimension where all of you becomes a mysterious manifestation an unfolding of this glory that Shekinah glory through your life possibilities that cause men to wonder and you see every time men look at you and they think you are so great then you remind them that we are only ordinary men defended by the jealousy of a great God that he stands behind us as a mighty terrible one this is what is making you become a mystery to many a sermon to many a challenge to others that your life becomes an effulgence did we not read about this man in the Bible did they not carry the power of God from nation to nation? It's not by empty grammar and speaking. No, we bring the possibilities of the kingdom, provable realities, demonstrating the ministry of the Spirit here and now. Oh, it's time to rise. It's time to rise. It's time to shake that, shake that old you. Shake that old you. Shake the powerless you. Shake the carnal you. Shake the flesh you. Shake the sense driven you. Rise to the realm of the spiritual. Hallelujah. I want you to sing for me a song. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is on. Hallelujah. This man looking at me, lift your hands. I saw fire coming upon you. That man, I stretch my hands upon you. In the name of Jesus, you are drinking of the wine of the Spirit. Let it open you to a new face. A new face. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. What does it take to walk in the power of God? What does it take to be a conduit releasing the possibilities of the spirit to the nations? What does it take to bring the counsel of Jesus to the nations? What does it take to be an epitome of the blessing of the Lord? What does it take to find favor with God and with men? The answers to these and more are shrouded in this mystery called the ways of God. He can show men his ways. We can feast on the patterns of the spirit and with them manifest wonders in this life. Prayer point number one, Father, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Someone cry to your maker. Shake it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Open my eyes. He said, call unto me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things 
Zaria, are you praying? Abuja, are you praying? Koinonia Global, cry! You may be a man of God, an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist. Hear me, we are in the days of his power. There is a mighty awakening across the nations of the earth. Open my eyes. Show me the keys to kingdom wealth and prosperity. Open my eyes. Show me the keys to operating the healing anointing. Open my eyes. Show me the keys to restoration. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive. Listen, I asked you the first question that is it true that God can come to indwell men? Question two, do you believe that the anointing of the Spirit upon a man can cause you to operate and manifest dimensions of possibilities that are not given to mortal men? That this engracing we call the anointing it says I have found my servant David Psalm 89 and verse 20 that with my holy oil have I anointed him I've anointed him whom my hand will lift are we together now 21 it says that the enemy shall not exert upon him verse 23 it says, I will afflict, I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. The last verse, it says, but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn, his horn is his authority, his influence, his relevance shall be exalted. That's why I raised that song. In your name I come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrecting me hear me you see the thing about the dealings of god with men please listen carefully the thing about the dealings of god with men is that at any level you can start with god and i'm not just talking of new birth at any level spiritually but the first law of transformation is that you must admit the limitations of your current state in pride transformation is an impossibility you have to first acknowledge that I am limited may be a man of God may be a businessman but my current frame of reference is not pro is not producing the possibilities then God can come to you with his mercy. When I cry to God, I cry as though I have not known him. I cry as if I do not know anything about the anointing. I am amazed at our arrogance in the body of Christ over the little that we see. Whereas there are virgin dimensions in the spirit to explore. The current context of our definition of strength cannot host the revival coming. It will take superior manifestations of the power of God if it is the nations we want to take uh -uh. we must quit this blind arrogance and begin to pursue with sincerity we have tried but not enough the current idea of what we call strength and power and results in the body of Christ I submit to you it is not notable enough to compel the nations it says where the carcasses are do you know what it means to make diplomats to make nations to make kings 
to make people from the Middle East, you know what it takes to turn their attention from their busy schedules to look at Jesus? It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. Listen, with all due respect, we're about to pray. We talk a lot about prosperity in the body of Christ and I respect all that God has done. But how many of us can give to nations and still be able to sleep sound? We are not there yet. Let us be sincere with ourselves. Being blessed enough for yourself is not really the blessing. Until you can give to the kingdom in a notable way as though it's a government giving and it does not affect you, you are not yet there. The ones who are there are lots of unbelievers, commendably there, but the church needs to rise. Look at the way we beg for money, we manipulate for money, it's unnecessary. We must contend for superior levels. Many years ago, the Lord revealed to me that there are seven dimensions of kingdom wealth that he was bringing to the body of Christ. And at the time he revealed to me, he told me we were only on level three. Three. You will see men who will stand like nations, whose lives will be a mystery economically. When they speak, it will be a combined echo of the spirit and resources. And some of you, this is what God is preparing you to become. But this version of you cannot host that glory. No. Not with your life still mad with a lot of carnality and greed and just wanting cars and houses. No. The kind of end time wealth we are talking about is beyond I'm wearing a Rolex, I'm wearing this, I'm wearing designers. That's wonderful. But we are talking about nations saved in one day using the resources of the kingdom. How about evangelists and pastors? We preach for hours and only two souls will come out. That is wonderful, but it's too slow. In, in the world today, on average, I, I, the last I checked, and I've shared it here, the statistics shows that the Christian faith only accounts for about 2.6 billion people out of the over 8 billion people now on earth. That is too small and is too slow. If it takes 100 years, or 200 years to win 2.6 billion people <laughs> then it means we're doing a bad job minus those who die minus those who are born and the 2.6 includes backsliders on serious Christians mixed together and yet he wants the gospel to reach all the 8 billion there must be an accelerator factor how are we going to get to the remaining over 5.4 billion who must hear about Jesus ladies and gentlemen provided we are still fighting one another I am for Paul and Apollos all that is a demonic distraction to waste our time because none of us I have taught here sustains the ability to host the global harvest I say it respectfully to the body of Christ any individuals who believe either as an individual or as a group or as a ministry, as a church, we can only do our best. It is only in unity that that mission will happen. In this unity, our inefficiencies laced with pride will become glaring and it will become the biggest impedance to our making that progress, even more than demon spirits. We must come to a place of respectful admission that our individual efforts can only go so far. It is the collective effort of the church, the ecclesia, that church from Asia to America, to the Caribbeans, to the Middle East, to Africa, to Europe, together as a united body. And unity does not mean uniformity. We don't have to do the same thing. We must just be guided by one cause. That when the trumpet is blown in Zion, everybody can hear and everybody can take their battle formation, acting according and within the measure of the grace allotted. This is what God calls for. Again, I will refer you to my message, Redefining Revival. 
Hallelujah. Are we together now? Yes. I really believe in what God is doing. But I submit to you, our current result cannot host the new that is coming. The Bible says you cannot put new wine. You know what Jesus was talking about? That you cannot put new wine where? In an old wine skin. That means every, he said, and he, tell, he tells us why. That if you put new wine in an old wine skin, it is going to tear it. So every time God wants to tear the old wine skin, he puts a bit of the new wine so that the old will tear and give room for a complete vessel. If you want the new wine, what's that song? Where there is new wine, there is new power. Sing it for me. I lay down my own to carry it on. Hear me, the old you cannot carry this new that is coming. The old businessman cannot carry the apostolic order of prosperity that is coming. The greedy you cannot carry it. The stingy you, the competitive you cannot carry this dimension of anointing because there is a requisite level of compassion you must have to be trusted with the grace that heals nations. Are we together? Yes. That leads me to the next prayer point. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. Here's the prayer. So I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to his work in me. Are you ready to pray this second prayer? Lord, the circumcision that must happen to me to be able to host the new that you are bringing, that circumcision of the flesh, that circumcision in my heart, Lord, let it happen. Expand me. Everything that needs to be done in my life to carry these superior levels of grace, prosperity, wisdom, influence, access. Let it happen. Someone is praying. You are a kingdom financier. Pray. It is not just give me, give me, give me. Your first prayer is make me. Make me before give me. Don't just pray and say give me billions. No. This version of you will be an ineffective and inefficient steward. Walk upon my heart so that my hands will be faithful. Walk upon my heart so that my bank account will be faithful. Walk upon my heart so that my sermons will be accurate. Walk upon my heart so that the results will be authentic. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.